Oi, oi, pessoal! Lembrando, vocês têm até o dia 12 de março, terça-feira, que vem para comprar Sound School. Venham fazer parte dessa família maravilhosa que é do inglês de Negro. Sound School é um curso muito, muito, muito importante para a sua vida no inglês. E se você quiser saber mais sobre, aguarda, escuta a gente. No final do episódio, a gente vai falar mais um fato importante sobre Sound School. Então, escutem! <música> Oi pessoal, estou aqui para falar sobre o Cambly. Cambly, março chegou, estamos aí, novo mês, novas expectativas, sem nenhuma desculpa para você não se inscrever hoje lá no Cambly, vai no cambly.com, no aplicativo do Cambly, coloca seu e-mail bonitinho e coloca o nosso referral code para ganhar uma aula de inglês de graça. Gente, vamos lá, aula de conversação é um dos pontos mais importantes para você aprender inglês. E nada mais óbvio do que isso, do que você poder testar uma aula de inglês com um nativo da língua inglesa lá no Cambly, que tem professores praticamente 24 horas por dia. E aí você vai lá, se inscreve, coloca o tipo de filtro que você quer, se você é iniciante, se você é intermediário, avançado, qual tipo de assunto que você quer focar. E o mais legal do mundo, para mim, é que tem professor quase 24 horas por dia e você pode assistir sua aula de novo por e-mail, porque eles te mandam. Então vai lá no aplicativo do Cambly ou no cambly.com e coloca o cupom que é em referral code, que é em inglês no cru podcast. Então de novo, o nosso código é inglês no cru podcast. That's it. Now on with the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of English no Kuru Haju. I am here with the one, the only, Alexia Souza. <laughs> Alexia Souza. Yes, at my brother's <laughs> wedding, many, many people, including the priest, said Souza, even after I corrected him various <laughs> times in the rehearsal. But that is one part of being a foreigner in the United States and one part of being a Brazilian with 20 names. Yes, that's for sure. I was asking you which other name I should use here that it would be better or easier. None of them. <laughs> maybe Silva. Mm, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so we are continuing to talk about today. Getting down to business. Yay. Yeah. So yesterday we talked about generalist and specialist. A generalist, also known, a very cool way to say this in English, is a jack of all trades. Someone who kind of has their foot in everything. And a master of none. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we have a specialist who's an expert. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about the generalist. For all of you generalists out there, people that consider yourself... More of kind of, I'm not an expert in one certain thing, but just good at a lot of things. This episode is for you. We are going to talk about the positives, the negatives, the good and the bad. Here we go. Alexia. Yes. First question for you. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Yes, I am. I was born ready. Okay. I like the confidence. <laughs> Bring in the confidence to the show. Okay. Alexia, what do you think are some of the positives? We'll just start with one big positive of being a generalist. That you don't depend on anyone. Okay, explain yourself. For example, if in our case, right when we were uh, starting English and Ikuru, As a ge generalist, <laughs> I was about to say the generalist. <laughs> As a generalist, I had to learn about a lot of things that I didn't even know that I could do it. So you don't depend on people to do your work. You can do it all by yourself. Yes. Okay. So I have two opinions on this. First... There is a famous business quote. I can't remember who said it, so I don't know the attribution, but they said something along the lines of boredom is failure. And when you are a generalist, you have to learn 
to do everything. So you're constantly learning. So even if you are not as good at everything compared to an expert, you're always learning and learning is fun. It makes you grow. It makes you happy. Yeah, that's it. So you learned how to do our website, for example. Yeah, and we've had a ton of problems and wasted a <laughs> lot of time and money. Yeah, but here we are today with no problem at all with a beautiful website. Please go there, englishnecru.com. Yeah, there probably going to be some problems on the website. <laughs> and honestly, if I had the chance to do everything again, I would have hired an expert. We are talking about the good things of it being a... We're going to talk about the good and bad. And, and yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting ahead. Getting ahead. Okay, so one good thing you believe about generalists is the idea that you don't... You're not an expert in anything gives you a lot of room and space to learn. Is that more or less it? Yeah. Okay, cool. I agree. Do you want to hear my first point? Yes, please. So I have an idea that in general, the generalists are the people that are at the top. They are the ones that run organizations. They make things happen because you need that confluence, that combination of just integrated skills to really bring something special together. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know if I agree 100% with that, but yes. Yeah. So the classic example, that, like the business school example, would be Steve Jobs. So most people know who Steve Jobs is <laughs> and most of his story. But Steve Jobs founded Apple. He started Apple and it was really successful. And then he was fired from Apple. Yeah. Right? And he went to work for Pixar. Yeah. You know what Pixar is, right? Yes, of course. Okay, sorry. Just making sure, making sure. And at Pixar, he learned all of these new skills. And he was kind of going through a crazy time in his life. I think he was taking LSD and acid. But he learned a lot about storytelling, organiza organizational management. And he came back in a completely different way. So Steve Jobs was never the best designer at Apple, never the best developer, coder, anything, but he was the guy to turn Apple into what it is today because he had all of these different experiences and he was the consummate generalist. Okay. Drop the mic. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think that's amazing. Well, take I don't know if I'm going to give an example, a very dumb example, but maybe the president is a generalist. <laughs> Which president are you talking about? Obama. I'm not talking about <laughs> Trump. I want the president to be the only expert generalist. In the world, expert in understand? everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to be kind of good at everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think those are two really positive things about generalism in general. Meu Deus. A lot of generous. Generous. See, I am always saying the, the gen. I can't generalist. <laughs> Yeah, we could change it to, we have a lot of words for this in English. Um, I love jack of all trades. You can also say a renaissance man. No, m too much. Master of none. Yes, I like that. Okay. <laughs> What do you think are some of the drawbacks or negative aspects? Do you have any ideas? Mm. Well... Maybe because you are a master of none, you don't believe that there are people who could do whatever you need to be done for a fair price <laughs> and get better on your products or your get service. Get better at. at. Oh, my God. Yeah, we need to have like a jar in our room. Every time you say get better on, you have to put a quarter in there. 
I will be rich man. I think it would work better if it was cookie. <laughs> do we, <laughs> we have to do cookie jars? Okay, we'll talk about that <laughs> later. So I think I understand what you're saying. Um, the big thing for me with generalist is we were talking about work, right? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about life in general. Obviously, it's good to have a diverse set of hobbies and interests in your life. But I think about this all the time on resumes. Like when one of my friends says, hey, can you look, look at my CV or look at my resume? And I read it and it's like, oh, this person went to university, had a normal childhood, had like two kind of jobs where they didn't really do anything specific. It's like you're not good at anything, <laughs> you know. It's like you're a nice guy, but you're not. So what I'm trying to say is, especially in economics and the workforce, the most valuable thing is how quickly and efficiently can you add value. And a generalist is not very good at that. But don't you think that in, in every generalist there is something something but I, I'm more specific about it like you are very good teaching I am very good with customer <laughs> service you know so I am I don't know yeah yeah no I totally agree we've talked about this last time that generalists are still good at things it's not like you're just kind of bad at everything you have areas that you're better and areas that you're worse but let's take the example of you are applying for a job as a customer service representative you have two options you have one person who has worked as a producer and also kind of done some customer service in that job And then you have another person that has worked as a customer service representative for five years. That's what oh, they've of done. Of course. But yeah, of course. Who are you going to hire? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Alexi is very bad at hypothetical <laughs> situations. Yeah. I would hire me because I was working for my company to deal with my Uh, customers and I used to do everything for them so when the manager looks at that and sees that okay she wants to work here the way that she wanted to work for her company it's amazing okay so let me give you another example to try, try to make it more simple um, in your previous life in your previous job at Porta dos Fundos Let's say you had to hire a production assistant. So you needed someone to do a very specific set of skills and you really don't have time to train and multi or micromanage them. You just want to hire them and they do their job, right? In that case, you would want to hire someone with that specific set of skills and experience. You would want to hire the expert, not the generalist. Yeah, but when you're talking about production, it's already very, very spe specialist, you know? Specific. It's specific. Special. Yeah, that's kind of my point, though, is most But jobs when are. you are working with production, you have to be a gen generalist in everything. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap. There's a little bit of both. But I think almost all areas... I mean, I'm really having a difficult time thinking of a job or an industry where you don't need any sort of expertise. Like teaching. Oh, you're an English teacher that specializes in phonetics for Brazilians. Could you teach this English class for Spanish speakers? Yeah. Yeah, I could. That's okay. Just because you know Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. But would there be someone much better for that job? Yeah. Yeah. So, do we have any final opinions about general? No, I'm just still thinking. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about my life. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. So while Alexia is having an existential crisis, we will start talking about specialist tomorrow, and maybe that will clarify some things. Alexia is making a motion that she is crying right now. <laughs> okay, guys. We will end on a happy note and leave you with a fun little fact about Sound School, which is closing on March 12th. Olá! Bom, mais uma vez estou aqui para falar que o nosso Sound School está fechando dia 12 de março. E como eu falei para vocês, vocês têm mais ou menos uma semana para se inscrever. E hoje eu vou conversar sobre as nossas live classes. Nós fazemos live classes uma vez por semana. E cada live class é um assunto diferente. Então, por exemplo, roteiro, é, sons mais difíceis, perguntas abertas, é, música, o que vocês puderem imaginar. E é muito legal, porque a gente avisa os nossos alunos alguns dias antes, e mesmo quem não puder participar naquele horário, naquele dia, não tem problema, porque a gente manda a gravação de tudo o que aconteceu na aula, em vídeo, com todos os participantes, todos os alunos, para cada um de vocês. Fica tudo lá disponível na plataforma do Sound School. Então, é um curso de inglês online, mas que tem todo o acompanhamento nosso e que tem live classes, o que eu acho mais importante de tudo, para as pessoas perderem a vergonha na hora, na hora de falar. Então, não se esqueçam, 12 de março é o último dia para se inscrever no Sound School. Então, bora lá!